there are two or three things that we've done at Catholic which are pretty, or which are, which, so I'll talk about those. One of which is that we have, Catholic is on Fish and Wildlife Refuge, so the Fish and Wildlife Service is very excited about this. We have elk remains, which are significantly larger than modern elk, including Roosevelt elk, which are the large elk at, at uh, Olympic National Park. Um, and Arlene Lyman, who is the, what they call zooarchaeologist at the University of Missouri, who's been doing our faunal remains uh, for Meyer and Catapodal, the faunal remains, you have the mammal remains, um, went around and measured elk bones and things like that. And this, this, these elk are huge. Um, and so we had two hypotheses about what it might mean. One was that we had an extinct subspecies of elk. And the other one was that the environment was such that elk could get to the absolutely flourish to the maximum size, even under conditions of really heavy predation. They were being hunted. I mean, the folks were hunting them very, very heavily. Uh, and so, in the course of testing this, we looked and said, well, if it's really good for elk, it's going to be good for deer. A deer should be huge. Well, our deer aren't. Our deer are, are big, but they're not unusually uh, big. <clears throat> so, then the notion is, well, then it's an extinct subspecies of elk. And we have had DNA work done on the elk bones, and the elk have some relationship with elk in uh, Alberta and in the extreme Rockies, but they're not related, connected to the local elk who are introduced Rocky Mountain elk. They also share genetics with elk 2,000 years old that have been recovered at Seaside, Oregon. So that gives some, some indication, well, maybe it is an extinct subspecies of elk. Um, so we're trying to find DNA for Olympic, for Roosevelt elk. So we can match and see, well, maybe it's, if it is an extinct subspecies, not if it's, if it's not an extinct subspecies, maybe then it's an unusually big population or an unusual population of really big Roosevelt elk. So we're trying to track down some Roosevelt elk samples. But the, the value and the point of it would be that if we do have, either way, if we have, we, we think we have found one ethnohistoric account that talks about really big elk, but otherwise there's no account, there's no discussion of this at all. And what this would, this points to, if they've gone extinct, this would point to really rapid environmental change after contact. That these animals were here, they were exploited for a four or five hundred year longer period, very, very intensively, and the people disappear and the elk disappear. The people don't disappear. Well, but their numbers shrink, and the elk are gone because there are no nobody's talking. Nobody's talking in the you know, 1860s or 1870s of oh, there's really, really huge elk in here. They're gone, and they're reintroduced. I think around about the beginning of the 1900s. Uh, it's probably so. It's the weather heavily hunted when Europeans showed up. That could be. But there aren't any, I don't have a count. You know, we're talking about bison hunting, but I, we haven't found any accounts of you know. Oh, we're out. You know, hundreds of people going out and shooting out giant elk in 1845. Uh, so there's a there's a real story here. If we can, you know, once we nail down our science.